Hello and welcome to Skills Development Scotland's o Option Choices webinar for parents and carers. My name's Amy and I'm a careers advisor with Skills Development Scotland. I'm joined tonight by my colleague Katie, who is also a Skills Development Scotland careers advisor, and we're really pleased to have so many of you joining us tonight from all around Scotland. Before we get going, there are a few things I need to mention. This session is being recorded to enable anyone who can't attend this evening to see it at a time that suits them and for you to watch again if you'd like to. We can't see or hear you, so if you want to make any comments or ask a question, you can do so using the Q&A box, which you'll see to the right of your screen. Your questions will be picked up by our colleagues who are working busily behind the scenes. We're not able to answer questions relating to a specific individual or school. However, we will give you details on how to contact your young person's SDS careers advisor, who will be able to help you. During the option choices process, you'll be informed and supported by your young person's school. And this webinar aims to provide co complimentary information and advice to support you through this process. We're expecting lots of questions to come in tonight and we'll try to answer as many as possible. If we run out of time though, within the next couple of weeks, we will be sending you a follow-up guide after this webinar, which will cover the most frequently asked questions and include all of the links, information and resources we mentioned throughout this webinar. There will also be a link to view this webinar again, so don't worry about trying to take any notes. Tonight's session will last around 45 minutes, including time for questions at the end. So, who are we? Well, as I mentioned, we are Skills Development Scotland, or SDS as you might know us. SDS is the National Skills Agency, supporting the people and businesses of Scotland to develop and apply their skills. As part of this, we deliver Scotland's career service. Working with our partners, we aim to ensure that every individual has the skills and confidence to achieve their full potential. Our careers advisors are professionally qualified, they are in every state secondary school in Scotland and as well as we also have a network of SDS centres, a free phone helpline and our careers website, My World of Work. We'll give you more detail on all of this during the session. I'm now going to pass you over to Katie to discuss more about how we support your young person in school. Yeah, thanks for that, Amy. Um, you may already know what SDS careers advisors do and what happens when your young person meets us, but some parent and carers might not, and you might just be surprised on what we can offer. As professionally qualified experts, we take a coaching approach to delivering career guidance, and we work at the pace of the young people that we are supporting. We encourage them to be actively involved when they come to meet us, and we help them to see what they need to do to make informed career decisions for themselves, rather than telling them what to do and doing things for them. We support young people from the primary seven S1 transition stage right through their school journey, including at key decision making times such as option choices. We do this through one to one discussions, class group, class group sessions and drop ins. To support with their career learning, we work together with the young person and agree goals they can work towards. This will ultimately help them develop good career management skills, which we will explain a bit more further in the session. We also support your young person in making career decisions, which at this stage is focused on them choosing the career options that are right for them. For many young people, option choices might be the first big decisions that they're going to make at school. This might sound a bit scary, but it can be a really exciting time for them as they are in charge. For you as parents and carers, though, it might be a bit worrying thinking about all the paths your young person could take. You may also hear them talk about different subjects and options that you might not be too familiar with. Please don't worry, we're here to help both of you with support, information, advice and guidance all along the way. As a parent and carer of a young person, you are the key influencer in their career decision making. We'll be sharing some advice and resources with you tonight to help you feel more confident to support them at this important time and beyond. At option choice time, there is the chance for them to have a one to one conversation with their careers advisor to make sure they know about and most importantly understand all the options so they can make those good decisions. You can join in this conversation with your advisor and your young person too. Please contact your young person's school to arrange this and you can join in on the appointment. It is important to mention their school will be there for them too. They will ensure that option choice columns support a broad timetable which will allow people to develop skills and qualifications to support lots of career options. 
So although you're in person is perhaps a few years away from leaving school, we think it's important to mention to you about the changes that are happening in the job market and the world of work. We have all seen how technology has massively changed how we work and live. The device you're using to access this webinar today is probably the best example of this. Advancements in technology have also created new job opportunities. Jobs like app developer, ethical hacker, energy engineer are all jobs that didn't even exist 15 years ago. These are jobs that you couldn't have planned for making your own option choices. Changes will happen and the world of work will keep evolving, affecting not just the type of work we do, but the way we do it. Some of the predicted changes are that people will have multiple jobs and more frequent job changes. As well as this, people will have to upskill, reskill and adapt. Change could be exciting and lead to lots of new opportunities and possibilities. We are here to support you and your young person to feel confident navigating change throughout their career journey. Our approach is to equip people with the skills they need to thrive and be successful. Although we can't predict the future of work, we can prepare young people for it and we do that by helping them develop their career management skills. I will now pass over to Amy who's going to tell you a little bit more. Thanks Katie. Career management skills are skills for life that empower us to understand ourselves and our opportunities and they're grouped under the themes of self, strengths, horizons and networks. I'm going to tell you a wee bit more about each theme. Self is all about understanding what you like, your interests, your values and what's important to you. Strengths is about understanding what you're good at and being able to develop this further and learn from different experiences. Horizons is about understanding what routes, pathways and options might be available to you. And Networks is about understanding who can help you and how they can help support your decisions and actions. These skills help us to make informed decisions and realise our potential at any point in our lives. If people feel confident that they have identified and developed their career management skills, then they'll be much better equipped to explore and consider their career ideas and take action to realise them. As your young person progresses throughout school, they'll continue to develop their career management skills to help them make those big and small career decisions. As we mentioned a moment ago, making option choices at school may be one of the first big decisions that your young person gets to make. This can be a bit daunting for them, but it's also a really good opportunity for you both to start thinking about the future and what they might be interested in doing. A question I'm often asked by parents and carers is, is this not a bit early to be talking about making decisions about what they want to do when they leave school? And it's important to bear in mind that option choices is not about knowing what career they want to do. It's about them picking a timetable that will make them happy, that they'll do well in and that will allow them to keep their opportunities open. Thinking about their career management skills, what they like, what they're good at, what's out there for them and understanding who can help them can make the process a lot easier for both of you. We're going to share with you now five key things for your young person to think about when they're considering their option choices and the ways that you can support this. Our first tip, which relates to the career management skill of self, is for your young person to think about what they enjoy doing now, both in and out of school. Option choices is the point where they can really start to focus on what they like to do and the things that they feel they do well at. They are much more likely to be energised, motivated and passionate doing things that they enjoy. So it's really important that this translates into a timetable that they're going to enjoy and look forward to. Whenever I'm speaking to pupils who are in the middle of making their option choices, the key question I always ask them is, what do you enjoy? Because you really can't go wrong if you're doing something you love. Something that can be really useful to do together is to have them make a list of their favourite things to do, whether that's in school or out of school, and discuss with them what they most enjoy about these things. The next tip we are going to give you relates to the career management skill of strengths, and that is discussing with your young person what they think they're good at. Having conversations about subjects they're performing well in can be really helpful, as often what we're good at and what we enjoy go together. Finding a good balance here will give them enough of a challenge, but it won't put them under too much pressure. As well as discussing what subjects they're good at and the ones that they enjoy, talking with your young person about their own skills, strengths and their personal qualities is a great way of supporting them to explore new opportunities that build on their strengths. 
Having these types of conversations can help them understand more about their own skills and strengths in relation to their option choices. And remember that there's plenty of support for you and your young person from us and your child's guidance or pastoral support teacher. Usually there'll be an opportunity to discuss option choices with teachers and careers advisors at parent and carer events ahead of them making their final decisions. I'm now going to pass you back to Katie, who's going to talk us through different ways that people learn. Yeah, so how do they like to learn? This tip also relates to the career management skill of strengths. Remember, strengths is all about getting to know and understand what you're good at. It's about your skills and how to use them in different ways. Your young person could think not only about what they like to learn, but how they like to learn. For example, they may enjoy languages because they get to talk and listen, or they may enjoy art and design or science subjects because they get to be creative. It is important to remember that there are also some subjects that your young person will need to do, like maths and English. There might also be some new options to consider too. Knowing how they like to learn can help them think about whether these new options would suit them. As parents and carers, you know your young person best and their skills, their strengths and their qualities. You may have career aspirations for them, but ultimately it's their decision to make. Encourage them to speak openly to you and others that they trust, including teachers, family members, friends and their careers advisor. This can give them the chance to bounce ideas back and forth and help them to explore all options to enable them to make informed decisions that is right for them. Remember to stress to them that they should do what they want to do and not what someone else wants them to, wants them to do. It must be right for them. Knowing where their option choices can lead to in the future can help young people understand the relationship between their subjects and the future career paths. The option choices tool on My World of Work, which we'll show you in a little bit, is a great place to start. You can input up to six option choices into the tool that will then link to job profiles and industries on the site. Job profiles provide information on getting into the job and what skills and qualities are useful. And this helps encourage curiosity about the world of work. We don't want to be too specific too early, but we encourage them to be curious and for them to explore careers that inspire them. Some of your young people might already have career ideas in mind and some won't. Having a career idea is great, but it's still important to always be curious about different careers. Young people can change ideas as they grow and develop as well. This involves getting them to think about career ideas, but in a more general way. So them not thinking, I want to be a marine engineer, but thinking, I quite like engineering, and if I have maths and physics, what could I do with that? We support and encourage them to find out what qualifications and skills might be required to do certain careers, as well as think about what kind of work environments may interest them. By taking a mix of subjects across a range of disciplines, they can keep all of their options open. As we've said, the world of work is constantly changing, as well as the thoughts and ideas of young people. So it's important for them to keep all of those doors open to them. As they move into the senior phase of school, there may be new options available to study and many different routes and pathways for them to consider. This could include subjects that they haven't studied before and options including foundation apprenticeships. This is something that your young person will look at in more detail in fourth year. Careers advisors and school staff will be there to support them to understand all the different options that are available. We're now going to share a short video from some senior pupils who have been through the process already, offering some advice about making option choices. I think that's important that you pick subjects that you're good at and that you enjoy because it will make you more happy with what your timetable is and you'll be more confident in the classes. I would say to pick a mix of subjects of ones that you find enjoyable and ones that will also be useful in the future. I think it's okay to not know what you want to do yet and just to go with the subjects that you enjoy studying because if you do that then you'll have more fun and you can work out from there what bits you want to continue and then what you want to do in the future. Listen to people's advice and talk it through with teachers and people at home. Don't be afraid to try new things Try new subjects because you never know that might be one of the best decisions you make. I would also make sure that you're not just going to pick the same subjects that your friends do because you might not have the same interests as your friends. You might be just 
specific to some gender your friends are. And it's just, even more I get that, we don't want to be the same class as your friends, but we love both, then you don't know what's the place to go to. So. I think that you should take a mix of subjects because it will keep your options open for your future. Be honest and realistic about the subjects you're choosing because if you're not actually being honest with yourself, then the subjects you choose may not be what you want. The advice I'll give is to choose a subject that I'm interested in because it's more likely you're excelling. If you're not sure what you enjoy as well, it can be good to take a whole range of different subjects because then you can try lots of different things and you're bound to find something you enjoy. And also, if you've got ideas for what you want to do in the future, then think about what subjects could be relevant for that subject that could benefit you later on. Don't be afraid to try new subjects that you're not sure about or you haven't heard of, because in the future it could like help you for your job or just something that you might develop an interest for. The advice I would give is to not try and narrow down your subjects based on a single career, but to base your course options off field that you'd like to go into rather than a single profession. And choose subjects that you find that will be interesting, so you want something to be excited about because you're only scientific or you can actually look for a profession you want by enjoying the subject at the same time. Don't worry too much and if you need help, ask for it. That was so great to hear the advice from Pupils Directly and a big thank you to all the Pupils for their support. We've now got another quick video to show you, to show you the key areas of my world of work that will support you and your young person with their option choices. My world of work is packed full of tools, articles, advice and information to help your young person make their decisions. You might even find it useful for your own career planning too. We're going to spend a few minutes showing you where to find some of the resources that we recommend to help you and your young person navigate the option choice content on the site. This will hopefully help familiarise you with the site so that you feel more confident going through it together. Firstly, at the top of the My World of Work homepage, you'll see three main options. My career options, as you can see here, is a good place to start. If we hover over the My Career Options tab, we can then click on the button Option Choices Tool and have a look in there. In this section, you'll find links to further support on making option choices, as well as the Option Choices Tool itself. Let's first look at the advice on how to make the best option choices for your goal. I'll click on the link over here. On this page, there's a video going through the big five questions to think about when making option choices. Further down the page here is a link to the Future Me Option Choices magazine. I'll just show you it. You can see the magazine has information on support available from us. The Big Five. Where choices could lead to. Jobs of the future and information on career management skills. This is a really useful resource to use with your young person to help with option choices. Let's go back now and click on the option choices tool itself. This tool allows your young person to enter up to six option choices, including foundation apprenticeship options, and find out where these choices could take them. You'll see on the screen I've put in four option choices, maths, computing science, physics, and art. When I click show my career options, it will bring up a list of related career ideas and industries for me to explore. As you can see, it's returned a large number of job profiles and one of them is an AR VR programmer. I can see some information about the job and I can also see that all of the options I typed in are useful for this. I can then click into that job profile and here I can see information including what a typical day looks like the average salary, what skills would be best suited to the role, and information about what may be needed to get into this role.
If I then click back, I can view some of the other job profiles or I can try out different option combinations. Let's go back to the My Career Options section. If I go into this section, you'll see a tab called I have a career in mind. By clicking this, you can view over 600 job profiles as well as industry pages to find out more about the range of jobs and industries available. If I click on View Industries, you can see here that there are 14 industries for you to explore, which in each tab you can find further information about the industry and the jobs available within it. Let's go back to the home page now. As you can see here on the home page, there's a parent and carers section. Click here to get more information and support designed to help you to have effective career conversations with your young person. So that was a quick overview of my world of work. We hope you enjoyed watching those videos. Um, let's now talk about some of the things that you can do with your young person at home to help them through the option choices process. Be sure to talk through all of their options with them and encourage them to consider the full range of opportunities open to them and to really keep an open mind. Explore the information and tools on My World of Work together. There is the dedicated area for parents and carers on the site and that can help give you the information to have career, confident, career conversations with confidence. Encourage them to talk about what they're good at and what they enjoy. It's really good to hear young people talk confidently about their skills and strengths. Reassure them that there will be other opportunities to make decisions and that there are loads of different ways to get where you want to be in life. And remember that we are here for you. You can join the option choice conversation in school as well if you feel that you would benefit from further support. The school careers advisor can be reached by contacting your young person's school directly. So we'd really like to thank all of you for joining us tonight to find out more about how SDS support you and your young person option choice time. We hope you found it helpful and informative. We've had a lot of questions coming in tonight and a lot of questions sent to us before the webinar as well. Um, so we're going to have a look at some of those now and answer as many as we can. One that a few people have sent to me that a few people have asked is, does every school have a careers advisor? Yes. SDS have a careers advisor linked to every state secondary school in Scotland and we offer careers advice, information and guidance. You or your young person can get in touch with SDS through your school, um, either via the office or their guidance teacher. We have had a lot of questions before this webinar about asking about certain entry requirements for specific careers or courses. This is something that pupils often come and ask me in school. Um, at least one appointment a day I'm asked something about a specific career or course and a really good place to start looking about the specifics for how to get into a certain career path is by using the job profiles on My World of Work. There are more than 600 of them, so pretty much every job I get asked about is on that list. And as you saw in the video we've just watched, there's a getting in section which covers like down near the bottom of the profile which covers any specific subjects that might be needed at school, as well as any courses they might need to do after school. To look for information about specific courses, you're best looking at the course pages themselves. Some college and university courses do ask for specific subjects, um, so it's really important to be aware of these as early as possible to make sure that your young person makes the right choices at each stage that they get the chance to. A lot of courses won't list specific subjects, they'll just say we want a range of hires. So encourage your young person to think about what they think would be useful in terms of preparing them with the right like knowledge and skills for that course. And remember to encourage them to use their career management skills as well and always bear in mind what are they good at and what will they enjoy. Entry requirements for apprenticeships can be found at apprenticeships.scot by using the live vacancy search Please bear in mind that as these vacancies are live, they change quite often. So it's important to check regularly and see what's available in your area. I have to sort of speak about this as well, because a lot of the questions sent to us about specific entry requirements mentioned medicine, which is something I get asked about a lot in school. Um, you can look up the medical courses on the university web pages that offer medicine for the academic requirements, and they'll specify exactly what they're looking for, very clearly laid out. Um, but 
it's really important to know that medical courses also have non-academic requirements such as the UCAT, work experience, conferences attended, journals read. So it, if your young person is feeling a bit confused about that and they'd like some support, get them to make an appointment with their careers advisor who can talk these things over and point them in the right direction. The course search on My World of Work is a really good way to explore college courses all over Scotland or you can look at the college web pages themselves for your local college or if your young person has a college, a specific one in mind. For university, I really like to use the UCAS search as you can see all of the options for that subject in Scotland or England as well and Wales if you want to, all in one list. And that can be found at ucas.com forward slash search. And that is one of the links that we will put in our information pack that we send out after this webinar. Another question I have had sent through to me is what routes are available after school to keep getting qualifications and where can we get more information about this? As we've mentioned, there are different routes available to gain qualifications outside of school, such as college, university, modern apprenticeships, graduate apprenticeships and other training options. For many career options, there will be more than one route into them. So it's really important that your young person is aware of these routes and chooses the one that's right for them. One of these paths is not better than the other. As your young person progresses through school, they'll get more advice on this. Um, and for further information, you can watch the recordings of previous webinars that we've done, which are options available after school and Scottish apprenticeships. And we'll put the links in the guidance pack that we send out after the webinar as well, just so you can have a look at those if you want to. I've had a few questions asking us when will pupils be asked to make option choice decisions? Um, what will the column choices be and how many subjects can they choose? It's quite tricky to answer because all schools like work to a different time frame and the so schools should make sure that you're provided with all the necessary information regarding course choice, the structure of it, the timings um, and the information about the course options that pupils have as well. If you feel that you shouldn't, you should have had this information already and you haven't, um, it should be sort of sent to you during their usual communication channels, whether that's news emails, group calls, parents evenings. But if you just think I've not had anything yet and I feel like I should have done, get in touch with the school, either the office or um, your young person's guidance teacher, and they'll be able to sort of send you on the information or let you know when that should be made available. We have lots more questions coming in, so I'm going to pass you over to Katie now to answer a few as well. Thanks for that, Amy. Yeah, some really good questions coming in. Um, so one that I've spotted is what is covered in different school subjects? Um, to find out about all the topic areas that are covered, we'd recommend it was best kind of linking directly with this, like your young person's school to find out the full course content details. However, there are some resources that we can point you in the right direction of to find out some more information. Um, so you can also look at the SQA website. So they have an A to Z list of current course content and related information. The National Parent Forum for Scotland have also put together um, a nutshell guide for school subjects. So there's some resources that you can go and check, but definitely referring back to their school and asking for full course content that the school offers. Sometimes the school website have some information, but definitely best to check with the school directly. Um, another question we've got that we've seen quite a bit tonight is what if my child hasn't got a clue what they want to do and keeps mentioning different careers? A lot of young people, as we've been saying throughout this webinar tonight, don't have this idea at the moment of what career they would like to do, and that's totally OK. Uh, we would encourage them to explore all of their ideas at this stage. Um, it's a good idea to focus on things that they enjoy, subjects that they're good at. It's also useful for them to consider a wide range of options that would support them into lots of different career paths that they might be interested in. You can research all these options together and support those career conversations. Um, again, a good place to start looking is the Exploring Opportunities on the industry pages on My World of Work, as well as the Option Choices tool on My World of Work. This will help them understand the links between the school options and the career industry opportunities um, and having that talk with their career advisor if they're not sure as well. Um, OK, thanks for both of those questions. They're both really good. I've got another good question coming in here, so thanks for that. So. This one is, how do I get them to choose subjects they like but are too afraid to do? 
as a key career influencer, as we said earlier, you can encourage them what would be good for them and consider and offer reassurance support to help them feel confident with their decisions that they're making at this time. They might still feel a bit uncertain. It's important for you both to remember that there's lots of people in a wider network that can support you with this. Um, this might mean encourage them to talk to relevant teachers, somebody they feel comfortable talking to like their guidance teacher. Remember that the school career supervisor are here to support both of you, not just your young person. So come and have a chat with us if we're a bit unsure about subjects, too afraid to take them. Um, yeah, use the network and speak to people. Thanks for that. Um, another good question we've got coming in is my child has additional support needs. What support is available? Thank you so much for posting that question. It's a really important one um, and I think it's important to talk to your key link person in school about the network of support that you and your young person will be able to link in with. Your young person's SDS school careers advisor will be part of that network of support. There are also some useful links on my world of work too about the support available when transitioning to other learning or employment. We'll also make sure they're available in our follow up guide that will be sent out to you as well. So many questions coming in, so I'm going to pass back to Amy to answer some more for you guys. Thanks, Katie. Um, I've been having a look while Katie was speaking and I've got a question here about asking us what are national qualifications and where can I find out more information about different qualifications in school and after school? So the most common qualifications that your young person will do in school are SQA national qualifications and hires. Um, for more information, you can visit the qualifications pages on My World of Work, or you could have a look at the Scottish Credit and Qualifications Framework or the SCQF framework to help you understand the main Scottish qualifications offered by schools, colleges, universities and training providers. When you, if you do have a look at it, it can look like quite a lot of information. It's a grid, there's a lot on it, but it's a really great visual that shows how all the different levels lead from one to the other and how they line up across different levels, even though they have different names. For example, advanced hire sitting at level seven and an HNC sitting at level seven. Um, one of them is offered in school, others are offered by colleges. So it can really help just show you how these things relate to one another and the different pathways that people of any age can take to gain qualifications. Um, they can also help make sense of it if, like me, you sat standard grades, for example, instead of nationals, it can show you how those kind of compare to the qualifications that your young people will sit now. We're going to stick the link, I think, um, in the information pack for that framework as well, if anybody would like to have a look at it. Another question I've had uh, spotted here, which I really liked, is what if my young person is considering a career which is very competitive to get into? We really encourage young people to be curious and research a lot of opportunities at this stage. Um, any ideas they have, encourage them to learn as much about them as they can doesn't mean they're committing, it just means that they're you know, gathering all that information. If they have a dream career, which a lot of young people do, it's important that they learn more about it, including the reality of what's required to get in, whether that's specific subjects or work experience, for example. The option choice process will allow for a broad range of sort of options or subjects to be chosen so they can work towards their dream and also keep their options open in case they change their mind or they have to have a backup plan or something like that, for example. As they progress through school, they'll be able to continue to assess their options and careers advisors love a backup plan. So they'll all be considered to, they'll all be um, encouraged to consider backup plans as well as support looking in things at like work experience or extra things they could be doing to get them into that dream job that they would just, or the dream course that they'd love to do after school. Someone has, um, ask something based on what we said earlier about employment changing over the years and that it's no longer sort of expected that someone will remain in the same career during their lifetime and how do we kind of work that into the work that we do with pupils in school. So the world of work is changing, it has changed um, and it's really likely that people will have many careers in their lifetime. So that's why we support young people to develop their career management skills so that they'll have the skills to help them make decisions now and in the future, um, whether that's a sideways move, a diagonal move, a career change, it helps them just to sort of recognise what they're good at and what they enjoy 
and helps them recognise and seize opportunities when they come their way as well. We really encourage them to learn about the world of work and the various pathways and opportunities available so that they can make the most of the things in front of them. And I think we've got time for one more. Somebody here is asking, based on something I think Katie said earlier, what is a foundation apprenticeship? A foundation apprenticeship is a work-based learning opportunity for senior phase pupils in school. It's a chance for your young person to try something new and develop important career management skills, which can help them to make up their mind about what they want to do as a job in the future. They are typically taken option choices sort of in S5 or S6, so a little bit further down the line. Um, and young, it means that young people get to spend time out of school at a college or with a local employer, and they complete the foundation apprenticeships alongside their other subjects like their Nat 4s, 5s or their hires. Um, most of the foundation apprenticeships offered give young people a qualification at SCQF level 6, which is the same as a higher, although there are some available at level 4 or 5 as well. Universities and colleges um, accept them for entry into courses and they're a really good option for anybody who wants to try something new, um, who wants a bit of work experience, has a career in mind and thinks this would really give me a chance to try it out before I commit to anything, um, or for anyone who learns by doing, you know, who learns by really applying what they're learning to a real life situation. If you want more information, including like what kind of foundation apprenticeships are available at your young person's school, you can find that information on apprenticeships.scot. Unfortunately, I think that is all the questions we've got time for tonight. So I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. Um, you'll see on screen now the various ways that you can keep up to date with what we're doing and how you can get in touch for more information and support. Please don't worry if you aren't able to get all these details written down. They'll all be included in the email we send out afterwards, um, which will also include a link to watch this session again if you want to do so. Remember that the SDS School Careers Advisor in your young person's school can be reached by contacting the school directly. You can visit your career website, My World of Work, at myworldofwork.co.uk. You can find your nearest SDS centre at myworldofwork.co.uk forward slash centres. You can give us a ring on 0800 917 8000 and our lines are open Monday to Friday 9 to 5. Or you can join us on Facebook by searching Facebook slash My World of Work or over on X or Twitter, um, whatever it's called now, at My World Scotland. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. We wish you and your young person all the best during option choice time and in the future. Thank you. <laughs>